hi, hi. Happy Sunday. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. I know it's kind of early, um, but I hope you guys are having an awesome day. I hope you had an awesome week. Um, I'm not going to do a lot of small talk on this video. I do want to say that probably next week I will do a video, but the week after that, I definitely have to get onto my website and do a blog post. I haven't done one in probably about a week or so. I am um, behind the scenes getting some more women lined up for the next Hues of Inspiration segment of the brand so that I can be able to present those um, young ladies to you guys probably late June, early July. Might end up going into the second week of July just because, excuse me, because of the 4th of July holiday. So we'll see how it goes, um, but that's kind of what I'm leaning toward. So I want to get right into the message today. I'm not going to go on and on with any small talk, um, just so this video isn't super, super long. So today I wanna to talk about broken vessels. And I have my cheat sheets as I always do, um, just in case, just so I can kind of stay on track. So really the reason I wanted to bring this up is because we all are, I think to a certain extent, broken. Um, but what I love about God is that he doesn't see our brokenness as us being worthless or of no value. Usually when things break, we look at them as being damaged and we simply throw them away. But what I want to tell you today is that God does not take the brokenness of our hearts, the brokenness of our souls, and just throw us away. He actually creates a masterpiece out of our brokenness. And that is what's so amazing and so beautiful, I think, about God, is that he doesn't discard us because we are broken. In fact, I think God has a preference or he leans towards broken people. Um, and I think that is because oftentimes when you are broken, when you're like, you kind of at your wit's end, you kind of are, I think, a little bit more receptive to God because when things are healthy and whole and you things are going well in your life, it's not to say that you dismiss God, but I feel like you, you kind of are not as receptive. When you are in a broken place, you are a lot more receptive. And that is where God can basically utilize his strength in our weaknesses. Because when you are broken, it's almost like you don't know where else to turn, whatever it is you're dealing with. I mean, it's like, what do you do? And that's where God shows up. I like to call him the Van Gogh, <laughs> the Van Gogh of brokenness. He creates masterpieces out of broken, fragmented souls. So I believe that God strategically, he picks out fragmented souls. And if you don't believe me, I want you to just think for a minute. I'm going to, these are very, very, very common stories um, that most people know or know something about. So let's talk about really quickly the story of Joseph. And I'm not going to go into great details, um, but we all know that Joseph, I don't necessarily, let me say this. I don't think that Joseph was initially broken. I do believe he came from a broken family because his own brothers, his own brothers, um, they hated him. They hated him. They were jealous of him. And as a result, as we all know, they threw him into a pit. Now, I will say, I mean, Joseph had to feel some kind of way because put it this way. If anybody throws you into a pit, you feel some kind of way, right? But your own flesh and blood, like really? You know, so I think that, I don't necessarily think he was broken initially, but I do think he came from a broken family. And I think when they threw him into the pit, all the stuff that he had to endure, all the stuff he had to go through, you cannot tell me that Joseph was not broken. But even within his brokenness, his entire story, on the back end, that's where God showed up. God was, I think, strategically allowing him to be broken, allowing him to go through these circumstances. And let me tell you, I think that the reason that God allows us to be broken, and sometimes I believe he not only allows it, but he strategically breaks us because he can then, he can then show up strong and mighty in our lives. He can then say, look, I rescued you. I, I got you out of the pit and now I have exalted you. And basically what Joseph, in, what ended up happening is Joseph ended up being second in command under Potiphar. He went through a lot. He was broken. His brothers disowned him, pretty much left him for dead. But as I said, God can take our brokenness. We are broken vessels and he creates a masterpiece. And that's so that he can have bragging rights. 
He wants bragging rights. He wants to be able to say, I am the one that got you out of the pit. I am the one that restored you. I am the one that made you whole. So at the end of the day, it's still about his glory and his honor, right? So let's move right along. There's Joseph. And then there is Moses. Now, the interesting thing about Moses, we don't hear a lot. So basically Moses, as a baby, he was put, in, put into the river. And that was basically because of the whole Passover and they were putting the, um, the blood on the, the doors and that was to signify which babies were going to be killed. And so because they, the, the parents knew that the baby he could potentially get killed, they put him on the river. They took a risk. So I don't necessarily think that what they did was wrong. But let me tell you this, and, and this is just from my personal experience. When you're dealing with, as a child, abandonment issues or things of that nature, I can't imagine that even if he got an opportunity later in life, because God chose him to lead... <laughs> the children of Israel into the promised land. A baby that was put on the river, God chose that baby when he was an adult to lead the, the children of Israel to the promised land. Now, granted, he never got them there because he got mad or whatever. We know the story, but he chose him. This broken, broken vessel. So it doesn't really go into great lengths about him, you know, how he was as an adult. He did have a stuttering issue. I don't know if that was a self-esteem thing. I have no idea. But at the end of the day, once again, God is taking a broken vessel. And guess what he's doing? He's creating, once again, a masterpiece. And that's how God is. That's what I love, 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 love God about God. Because just because you are broken, just because you are you traumatized, just because you've dealt with issues in your life, does not mean that God cannot use you. In fact, he has a preferential, he has a preference towards you because he knows that you are so broken. You are humble in that space and he can use you. A lot of times, if you are healthy, you are whole, your, your head is puffed up, he can't get through. He can't use you. And so he prefers broken vessels. The last one is Job. Now, let me say this. I don't necessarily think Job was <laughs> Job wasn't broken at all. I mean, Job had it going on. But here's the thing. Satan wanted to challenge God. So, in challenging God, he said, "Okay. What about your servant? What about your servant Job? If I take everything from him?" He was basically challenging God and saying that Job would curse him if he took everything from him cuz he was like, "You got this hedge of protection around him." Of course, he's going to love you. Of course, he's going to honor you. Of course, he's going to be faithful towards you. Excuse me, but if I take this away, will he still honor you? Will he still trust you? Will he still have faith in you? And when I tell you, let me tell you, Job got a whole book in the Bible dedicated to him because his story, man, I can't even imagine what Job went through. But guess what? He never cursed God. And so I don't necessarily think that Job was broken initially, but all the stuff that Satan put him through, you can't tell me that man wasn't broken. He was mad. I can't, that's a brokenness that I don't know that I could probably, I, I have to be real. I don't know if I could get through that. <clears throat> Excuse me. But once again, <laughs> when it was all said and done, Job got everything back and he got double for his trouble. So once again, God uses broken pieces, broken vessels, broken souls, and he creates masterpieces out of them. He doesn't do it for us. He does it for his glory and honor. He wants bragging rights. He wants to be able to say, even in your brokenness, I can not only make you whole, but I can create a masterpiece. What an amazing, amazing and awesome God we serve. If that doesn't make you love him that much more, I don't know what will. I mean, because when I think about my life, I'm like, wow, the things that I've been through, um, it's like, I don't know how or why God chose me. And um, you sometimes, one of the things I will say is sometimes when people are broken and, and hurt and wounded and traumatized, oftentimes people, I've been around so many people that are so angry at God. They are so, 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 so angry at God. And I'm thinking to myself, but why? Why are you angry at God? 
I know sometimes it doesn't seem fair, it doesn't seem just, but God still loves you. If you allow him to, he can take the broken pieces of your heart. He can take the broken pieces of your soul and he can make you whole again and he can create something so beautiful. It will blow your mind. He really does love you even within the brokenness. He can create something so beautiful within that. And I'm just like, I can't imagine my life without him as broken as I am. Um, I can't imagine my life without him because I wouldn't be sitting here today if it had not been for his love, had, had it not been for his hand on my life. So I am truly, truly, truly thankful. And I want to leave you guys with this. I'm just going to leave a couple of, talk about a couple of, a little bit more modern stories of how God um, uses brokenness. Um, and these are very, very common. The first one is Susan G. Coleman. We all know about the Susan G. Coleman Foundation uh, or Breast Cancer Foundation. She um, discovered that she had breast cancer. Let me see. I have to take notes because I don't remember the year. Okay, so she discovered that she had breast cancer in 1977. Instead of being bitter, instead of being angry, she did something about it. That brokenness within her um, caused her to create a foundation that would help many more women down the line who struggle with breast cancer. And then the next one is the MAD Foundation, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. That was founded by, let me find a young lady's name, because like I said, I don't know these exact dates. And things that was founded by Candace Leitner. Um, and that was she founded that in 1980, 1980 when her son was killed by a drunk driver. I tried to use common things. There are many, 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 many stories that of brokenness where God has um, excuse me, He has used the brokenness and created masterpieces. The reason I say they're masterpieces is because oftentimes when you're broken, it's very easy for you to sit back and be depressed and woe is me, you know, blah, 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 blah. And um, that's not what God wants you to do. He wants you to give your brokenness, your broken heart, whatever you're dealing with to him, because he can put you back together again. He can make you whole. And not only that, he can create something so beautiful out of your brokenness. And that's what I want you to understand today. So if you are discouraged, if you're depressed, if you're going through, please understand that God takes broken vessels he is the Van Gogh of brokenness, and he create, can create a masterpiece in your life. Anybody that's struggling or needs Christ in your life, please submit yourself to God. He wants to get you set free. He wants these chains broken off of your life. He wants you free. And not only does he want you free, but he wants to create something amazing and beautiful out of your life. I love you guys. I love you. I love you. I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. You know the drill. If you like this video, thumbs up me. Um, if you want to comment below, please feel free to do so. Please share the page. I got a few more subscribers. I'm little by little building this thing up. <clears throat> and um, I'm excited. You know, whatever God gives me, whoever God puts in my path, I am truly and truly thankful. Like I said, I think I said this early on. One of these days I may sit down and tell my full story. Um, because I know where God brought me from. I know I am broken. Um, and even to this day, he's still mending and fixing me. But to be where I am today, to be in a position to be able to um, encourage, uplift, inspire other women, you know, I'm going to be honest and be very transparent. There are days, and this is probably one of them, that, you know, I get up and I don't necessarily feel like doing these videos. But you know what? The reason I do them, I do them because... I see this as a blessing. I see it as an opportunity. I see it as a privilege because at the end of the day, my life could have turned out so differently. Um, trust me, it could have turned out a lot different. And because I have this opportunity, I cannot allow this. I cannot sit back and just be lackadaisical with it because God could have chosen anybody to do this brand. But he chose me. He trusted me to be able to get up and be committed to this. And the Bible says, if you are faithful with a few things, he will make you ruler over many. I just want to be committed and faithful to this and whatever messages he has me to give to you guys, that's what I want to do. And I want to do it with a level of commitment and a level of excellence because I don't know. I see it as an honor. I see it as a privilege because I know how broken and how fragmented I am, but he still gave me a platform. He still gave me an opportunity to share his goodness, to share his love, to share who he is with the world. So I thank you. I thank you for tuning in. 
Hope you guys have an amazing, amazing, amazing week ahead. Until we meet again, Katalan Bonnery. Peace out.